2012 African Cup of Nations time again and in this segment of M10 Football Webcast we take a look at Group D. Welcome to M10 Football Webcast, I'm your host Brian Lee. Alongside me I have Dwayne DeLocker and Dwayne in this group we've got one of the favourites to win the tournament, Ghana. But they'll be up against the likes of Botswana, Mali and Guinea. But surely Ghana are too strong for these teams and they'll qualify with ease for the knockout stages. Brian, I tell you what, I, I still believe that uh, this Ghanaian side is uh, right up there with Cote in terms of teams that are going to go on and win this, uh, this tournament and claim a fifth title. They haven't won one since uh, 1982, so you, you find a team that has gone 30 uh, odd years without winning a tournament, Ghanaians are hungry to claim a world title and you, you, you look at the core of the squad, they've got some great players and they've also got a team that went and won three years ago now, the, uh, the, the, the World Youth Cup, the, the Under 20 World Cup back in 2009 when it was hosted in Egypt. So a great opportunity for some of these, these youngsters to, to come through and show what they've got. Unfortunately, the likes of Dominic Adia, Prince Tago have not quite lived up to the expectation uh, they showed, or the promise that they showed at the time. But you look at Asamoah Gyan, real star player, despite the fact that he's currently playing on loan in United Arab Emirates, I think you also need to look at players like Harrison Afful leading from the back, part of the Esperance squad that went on to win the CAF Champions League, and most importantly, the man that scored the all-important winning goal in the two-legged final. And if you look at recent performances from this Ghanaian side, you've seen a slow and steady build-up. Sure, their performances perhaps in warm-up matches leading up to this tournament where they've been held by a lot of teams, where they've conceded some silly goals, has not been ideal. But then again, that was exactly the same back in 2010 and exactly the same in 2008. And they finished third in 2008, second in 2010 with basically an under-20 side. I think this team has got what it takes to go all the way. Certainly Ghana do look like a formidable team and likely to go a long way in the tournament. And as you say, Dwayne, if not possibly, pick up the title. But if anyone can stop them in this group, it's got to be the likes of Mali, or the likes of Sadio Keita and Diara. Those two players, very significant for Mali. How do you see them doing, as well as the other two teams? Botswana first qualifies for the tournament, and then obviously Guinea. Yeah, Brian, you might have hit the nail on the head with Mali. They're a team that certainly doesn't always look like favourites on paper, but they've always got one or two star players in the tournament. Of course, Freddie Canute's appearances in, uh, for Mali at the African Cup of Nations have certainly been impressive over the years. And Seydou Keita, a man who plays with uh, the best team in the world officially, I mean, in, in his club football with Barcelona. This is a man who narrowly lost out on the African Footballer of the Year title uh, just a couple of months ago. But if, if you look in terms of, of player personnel, they don't have the strongest squad this time around. Since the retirement of, of Freddie Canute, they've really battled to find a, a, a top-level goal scorer. And somebody like uh, Cech Diabate at the moment is the man who's uh, got, to, got the responsibility resting on his shoulders. He's not quite been able to step up to the plate and certainly not, uh, not half the player that Freddie Canute was. But there does seem to be more of a team spirit growing in this Mali side. And when it comes to African Cup of Nations tournaments, while you get teams that are traditionally strong that fail to perform at the African Cup of Nations, Mali is quite the opposite. They're not traditionally strong, but when it comes to African Cup of Nations, they've got the ability to not only make it past uh, the group stages, but to make it into the final four, get all the way through to the semi-finals, and more than half their appearances at uh, African Cup of Nations, in fact, they've made the top four of the tournament, never gone on to win it, and that is the one sticking point for this Mali side. Can they do it this time around? Botswana are also very much dark horses. Uh, Botswana, maybe not the, uh, the most prominent of teams when it comes to international football, one of the lowest ranked teams in Africa that have qualified for this tournament, and in fact, this is their first appearance at an African Cup of Nations, but they've got some star players that are led mostly by uh, PSL-based players, the likes of Mohoke Khabunamong, Dipsy Siluane, uh, Jerome Ramat Lekwane, five goals in, uh, in qualifying. He's a man who uh, has not been shy of playing on the international stage, but when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to regular game time, he's been out of favour at his club Santos after some, some issues uh, contractually, it seems, and he's not actually been playing match football. That's the huge concern for uh, Choshana, the, the Botswana coach. I think the other team you've got to look at, this Guinea inside, they've got uh, a lot of different aspects that you've got to look at. And I think one of them that not a lot of people are focusing on is the fact that this uh, Guinean side has received a great deal of government support, which is something that has not happened in previous years. Why do you ask? Because the sports minister of Guinea at the moment is none other than Titi Kamara, one of the greatest Guinean players of all time. Titi Kamara has d decided that he's going to financially support this team as far as he possibly can. So they're getting the best possible government support leading up to this tournament. 
Look at the way they qualified, comfortably ahead of Nigeria in uh, Group B of the, the qualifiers. Will they be able to do the same against a team like Ghana in the group stages of this tournament? Perhaps they will, but they remain a bit of an unknown quantity. And they've got some very talented young players coming through, but it's still the old talismanic players, the likes of Pascal Fanduno, who will be uh, leading the charge for this uh, Guinean outfit for me. You have it from the horse's mouth. Ghana to top the group and possibly win the tournament. But we'll certainly see what they made of when they kick off the group on the 24th of January, taking on Botswana.